You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. I had tonight an update on a nearly two decade Superfund cleanup in Libby. Could it finally be coming to an end? Plus, Billing says goodbye to those old tornado sirens. The city taking a more modern approach to disaster warnings. We're going to explain. But first, with Montana's ever changing spring weather comes travel risks, warnings and dangers. And tonight, the impact of treacherous travel caught through the lens of a Montana Highway Patrol dash cam. It is serving as a reminder to all of us. Our rainy weather catching drivers off guard with a close call coming to, li coming to light tonight in Billings. Take a look at this. It's video captured by Highway Patrol Trooper Calvin Jimerson. A semi, as you can see, stalled on the side of the interstate there. And then a service worker stepping out to help. Watch as that silver SUV fails to obey Montana's move over laws, stopping right there, just in the nick of time. That driver was not ticketed because that person was gone just as fast. A crew's busy cleaning up roads in the Flathead after a rock slide came down near Foy's Lake. It happened on Patrick Creek and Foy's Canyon Road, and also recently a rock slide near Glacier National Park. Rain mixed with gravity takes a hold, and those rocks, dirt, and trees come down. Drivers should watch for falling rock, but luckily nobody was injured. Well, this April snowstorm brought a foot and a half of snowfall along the Rocky Mountain front. These photos are from Hart Butte. Look at that heavy snow caused some power outages, buried cars, as you can see, and roads. And take a look at this. It is some video that you're not going to believe as Dublin Gulch Road is washed out in Lake County. Wow, look at that. County commissioners making a disaster declaration to prepare for high water and flooding. The water took out a very large section of that roadway and continues to do so, making it impassable. Luckily, crews closed that road just yesterday. Drivers now are urged to go slow, keep an eye out for water on the road. No word on how long that road is going to be closed, but from the looks of it, probably a long time. Concern tonight for those living along the Clark Fork River in Missoula. Residents could face extreme flooding again this year. Missoula Emergency Management is asking county commissioners to sign an emergency proclamation. The flood stage was lowered to seven and a half feet this season. While flooding is not imminent now, the situation could be different in May or June. Emergency proclamation does not mean that we're in a flood emergency right now. It essentially allows us the ability to start the start those necessary preparations in case we should have an emergency. Uh, it, it allows us to start getting all of our stakeholders together to activate our emergency operations center and to start making some of those plans should should the the river rise to that to that level. So a meeting is planned at Hawthorne School. It's going to be on April 24th at 6 p.m. Well, technology is changing most everything that we do, alerting those in Yellowstone County of the threat of fast changing weather. MTN's Samantha Sullivan has more on the new Code Red system. With just the download of an app, emergency alerts will now come right to your phone. If there's a public safety issue, an evacuation order, a flood, a hazardous material spill, a severe weather, um, those are very typical of the types of alarms that you'll get. This new technology will eventually replace the county sirens, which Williams says are more expensive and less informative. The sirens don't give you any information, and they only go off for severe weather events. But what if we have a hazardous material or a flood or a criminal activity or any of the other stuff? We have no way of knowing. While the app is convenient for some, you can also register a phone online or sign up with an email address, making alerts accessible to almost everyone. In Yellowstone County, our current siren system only covers seven-tenths of a percent of the land area. So with Code Red, we're able to reach well over 95% of the people. The Code Red system is free for users, but will cost the city and county about $25,000 a year. Williams says that number is still less expensive than the sirens, which can cost about $30,000 a piece to buy and doesn't include maintenance. In Billings, Samantha Sullivan, MTN News. Well, the next county emergency test is going to happen on April 17th again for Yellowstone County. New information tonight surrounding your safety as you visit our next national park. 
We're learning the number one danger to visitors is slips and falls near water. Folks should be on the lookout for slippery moss, covered rocks and logs near open streams and cliffs. Those with Glacier National Park say falls took the lives of two visitors in recent years. Avoid wading into swift streams and try not to walk or climb on slippery rocks. New details surrounding the massive Libya Asbestos Superfund project and how the cleanup could be nearing an end. 45 acres, five miles north of downtown Libby has been removed from the national priorities list. The Environmental Protection Agency says no further remediation is needed there. This specific area will be subject to regular reviews, but the EPA continues cleanup in other areas of Libby, including, of course, the former mine site. New changes, new charges filed in federal court for a former Lewis and Clark County Sheriff's deputy. Virgil Wolf pled not guilty to three counts of child sexual exploitation. And court documents say Wolf persuaded a victim to engage in sexual conduct, and then he produced sexually explicit materials, distributing them over state lines. Cascade County recently dismissed their charges when federal charges were filed. An ongoing investigation in Wheatland County surrounding a group of horses allegedly left to starve. These are viewer photos sent to us. The Sheriff's Office is investigating, and County Attorney's Office tells us this has been an ongoing issue for some time, a few years. The 19 horses were left by various owners to graze near Shamit on Canal Road. However, winter vegetation left little for those horses to eat. The sheriff's office is tracking down owners as they care for the horses, but no one has been charged yet. Debts from unpaid student lunches in Helena anonymously paid for by a Montana politician. And oddly enough, all of this happening on Childhood Hunger Awareness Week. One in six Montana kids don't get enough to eat each day. So to help, $2,500 was donated to Helena Public Schools to cover the lunch deficits. State law requires that candidates for political parties zero out their accounts after their race. Many times the money is returned to donors or it's donated. Ravalli County had start getting a massive grant. The $750,000 grant will mean more placement for newborns to three-year-olds, and this will allow Head Start to enroll 16 more children. We're told the grant's pretty hard to come by. We had applied before and were not successful, and so in this round, uh, we applied again and honed our proposal and focused on some specific things that we thought might, might help. Um, and as a result, we were successful, we're right under 500 grants nationally. The grant application was roughly 70 pages. Of course, they had a lot of help from administration and staff. New technology at work in Bozeman with a new way for patients to receive care. It works through a virtual care app. Patients can access health care any hour of the day, 365 days a year. The app allows a virtual appointment with a provider, something that is useful for those living in rural areas of our state. We believe that this is important to offer to our community because it is an access point that is becoming more preferred by patients and consumers um, based on the way that we shop, based on the way that we access goods and services in all other areas. Healthcare is another thing that is important to us to have on demand. And downloading the app is free. The virtual appointment is a flat rate of $69. Technology is changing the way we look out for our neighbors in Montana's small towns. This especially as police resources are sometimes pretty limited. MTN's John Amy tells us how Facebook keeps an eye out for crime. Traditional neighborhood watch programs have been around for decades, but social media sites like Facebook are the new way to watch the neighborhood. You know, neighbors used to go out and walk, walk the neighborhoods at night. Now they just look at their phone and say, what's going on? Robert Burgi started Butte America We Just Want to Know page on Facebook about two years ago to give people a forum to get information out. The page has now become popular for people reporting crimes in their neighborhood. It brings awareness. Um, I just saw on my page, I think it was yesterday, somebody had filmed two people breaking into a garage and they're like, do you know them? And you know, out of 10,000 people, somebody says, I think that's John Doe. 
For Butte Police, pages like this help them investigate crime, especially when people post video. That we've had some success, um, and we're just going to continue to have more with more and more surveillance systems out there, and and more and more seemingly more and more people wanting to keep an eye on their neighborhood because of uh, the availability of the internet, and they can kind of keep in touch. So anyone with a smartphone has access to a camera and social media, so they can quickly post something about a crime on social media. And police say this has actually helped them solve cases here in Butte. We did have a trailer that was stolen that the person had uh, some surveillance. They posted it on Facebook, and fairly shortly afterward we were getting information from the community about who the suspects were, and, and actually there was an arrest made in that case. Keeping watch. In Butte, John Amy, MTN News. So many of us part of those Facebook groups and police do encourage neighbors to engage more on their social media platforms. We'll still ahead on tonight's MTN 9 o'clock news, two major bills in the legislature and two not so coincidental delays. We'll explain coming up. Plus, recapping our top stories about flooding and weather, forecaster Bob McGuire will put it all in perspective for your area of the state. We've got that right after the break.